Good job. Oh yeah, I'm definitely man. I'm I'm a Hebrew Israelite man. We the original Jews man. Kyrie. Chinese, Chinese, Hebrew, Native American. Yeah, Kyrie said that we the original Jews man. Kyrie and you know Kyrie would know he went to Duke man for um I think a, a year right. Kyrie went to Duke for a year man. You would know. The Baltimore so City State Attorney's Office is reviewing a decision reinstating the murder conviction of a man made famous by the Serial Podcast. That's right. On Tuesday, a Maryland... Get one of you familiar with the Serial Podcast. Um, I was at a party with a bunch of liberals in about 2013. It had to be 2013, 14-ish. And real wine and cheese crowd. And that's the first time I heard of it. And white guy was talking to this white liberal guy. Very nice guy, dynamite guy. He was telling me, you know, about it and whatnot. And within two seconds, I was like, oh, that motherfucker did that shit. Because <laughs> he was trying to tell me, like, oh, my God, this is terrible. This guy's been in jail for all this time for a crime he didn't commit. And he was telling me about it. I was like, oh. I was like you know the guy did it, right? <laughs> he was like, he just looked at me like, what? You heard Did he have a sigh of relief? Like, oh, thank God I can say something that's fucking true, nah, man. He was just like, you weren't supposed to say that. He just what, if, what if he had just dropped like a super country southern accent, though, and then just acted normal? Yeah, freaked man. you out. Yeah, that would have been crazy, but there wasn't that type of crowd, man. So that, that was not going to happen. And appellate court ordered a do-over of the hearing in which a judge vacated, which means, in essence, tossed out the conviction of Anad Syed. Syed had been out of prison since September of last year. Prior to his release, he had been serving a life sentence since 2000 for the murder of his ex-girlfriend, Heyman Lee. He says that he never committed that. So, right, joining us now is Paul Cassell. He's a law professor for the University of Utah. He's also a former federal judge. And, Paul, I know some people have been following this case for, for a long time and very closely, but others, it's, it's all fresh to us. So just break it down and explain why Syed's murder conviction effectively now has been reinstated. Yeah, so as your introduction mentioned, back in September, his murder conviction was set aside. But in that hearing... The victim's family had not been given adequate notice that there was going to be such a hearing. They received notice uh, maybe late in the day, Friday, for a, a Monday hearing. And the, uh, on appeal by the victim's family, the uh, American, Maryland Appellate Court said that's not enough time. We've got to remand for a new hearing. We need to set aside the vacature of Syed's uh, murder conviction. So that reinstates the murder conviction for a new hearing where the victim's family will be present. And it sounds like they'll be able to be her, uh, heard as well. You know, it's interesting, Paul, because people tend to think that in our legal system, you know, if you if they say you were not guilty and they vacate your conviction, you go home and you're not then pulled back in. Understand that that the appeal was about the the amount of notice that was given uh, to Heyman Lee's family. But does this mean possibly that Syed might be taken back into custody at some point? Because we know that he has been rebuilding his life yeah. since September, taking care of his elderly family and, and working on uh, on. Um, the rights of formerly incarcerated people. Working on the rights of formerly, basically he's just doing nothing. Yes, it's certainly a possibility that he could have his conviction permanently reinstated, which would then mean he'd have to continue serving the sentence. He hadn't finished his sentence uh, when it was set aside in September. Obviously, a murder conviction is an extremely uh, serious conviction for an extremely serious crime. So, that is one of the possible outcomes, but obviously that remains to be seen. It could also be that the judge who is now going to re-examine this in a hearing where the victim's family is uh, present and presumably able to be heard might end up doing the same thing. So we don't know exactly what will happen, but we do know that everything uh, is back on the table. And so what's possible now? Because in some ways, people look at this as just like a legal maneuver. It's all quite clerical. Um, but for, you know, what is a, a murder charge and someone lost their life, that's what's at the center of this case, it is very serious. So what needs to happen now for Syed to, I guess, once again, be exonerated? Well, he's going to have to prove that there's a reason to set aside his conviction. And the victim's family is now going to be heard 
uh, I assume in opposition to that. And so I think this is a really valuable decision because it decision because it reminds judges in Maryland and, and hopefully in other states that if they're going to be important criminal justice uh, decisions that are made, the victim's family should be able to participate at appropriate points in the process. For example, during a plea bargain hearing or at sentencing and now at a vacature hearing. So these are opportunities for the victim to speak not to have a veto over what happens, but at mm -hmm. least to have a voice in the process. Yeah. And it, it's worth keeping in mind that Syed says he, he has always said that he is innocent mm -hmm. of these charges. Um, and as you say, Errol, there is still a, a dead woman, um, a young woman at the heart mm -hmm. of this. Um, but we don't want to just put somebody in prison because we need to put somebody in prison. Uh, so I want to ask you about that because sources told CBS News last year that prosecutors were narrowing in on a different suspect in the murder of Heyman Lee. Uh, does the absence of a development in this case uh, since last fall mean that charges are not likely to be brought against someone else? What, what, with your understanding of the legal system, might be happening? Well, it's going to be very difficult for the state to sw uh, shift gears and go from <laughs> Uh, murder uh, defendant who was convicted and say, oops, sorry, we got the wrong guy. Uh, it's actually somebody else. Remember, the state has to prove guilt beyond any reasonable doubt. And in this case, since they've already said Syed is the, the murderer beyond any reasonable doubt, I think it's going to be an uphill battle to say, well, wait a minute, it's actually some other fellow. All right, so let's see what really happened, man. This guy right here, Let's see how fucking let's see. I wanna don't tell me what you think. I wanna know what you guys think if this guy this guy really do it, man. It's the case made famous worldwide. This is a global kill link prepaid call from a non saiyan by the podcast Serial. Listeners were obsessed and left dying to know if Adnan Syed, already in prison for 17 years for murdering his ex-girlfriend, Hey Min Lee, is guilty or innocent. Now, new evidence in a new trial. In my opinion, this has always been one of the city's great miscarriages of justice. But many wonder, will that day ever come? This is a, a battle that, based on the record, uh, should not uh, result in a new trial. 17 years ago, Woodlawn High School was home to a diverse group of best friends in the Magnet program. We were a close-knit group of people. We all were in the same classes together, so we hung out together a lot, both inside and outside of school. Within this tight group of friends were high school sweethearts Adnan Syed and Hey Min Lee. Hey was very popular, an honor student and athlete. She was very charismatic. She was full of life. She was just um, one of the sweetest people. Adnan, also very popular, was a football player, honor student, and prom king. Adnan was very outgoing. He was friendly with everybody. He would go out of his way to make sure that people would laugh or smile. Saad Chaudhry, who went to a different high school, knows Adnan from the mosque. We have similar experiences growing up, Muslim, Pakistani, here in the U.S. We both played football. We both were popular in our high schools. So it was just uh, similar lifestyles. So that's what kind of made us a common bond. Both Adnan and Hay grew up in traditional families. Adnan was Pakistani American, Hay was Korean. The differences in their religions and ethnic backgrounds meant sadly there was no real future for them as a couple. Without a doubt, there was a point in time in which they were very much in love. But I think they came to that realization that this isn't something that was gonna work out beyond high school. Like a lot of teenagers, Adnan and Hay broke up and reconciled a couple of times. The final breakup was hard on Adnan. There would be times where he would, you know, call me upset or just want to talk. And it wasn't ever anger. It was more of, of sadness. I need help getting over this. Despite some heartbreak, Adnan and Hay remained the closest of friends and soon became interested in others. She just expressed that there was this new guy that she was really into, that they'd started dating and, you know, kind of how dreamy he was. He started going to parties and meeting girls in college, and he started, you know, really looking forward to the next step of life. But the next step for both would prove to be devastating. The day was like most others. According to Adnan, he goes to school, 
then leaves, driving to his friend Jay's house. Jay was going to be borrowing Adnan's car for the day. Jay was not part of our group. He just had a different personality than um, somebody that... So the day she dies, he's, his friend is borrowing his car for the day? That's very convenient, right? Is that not convenient, guys? Well, yeah. I don't know. I'm not a good criminal. I mean, my friend, my friend's gonna borrow my car for the day, and then that's the day that your girlfriend ends up dead, like, so, so, like somewhere. It's just, it's just convenient. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that he. I just, it just, uh, it's, it was shit like this. Where I was like, wait a second. Of our group. He just had a different. According to Adnan, he goes to school, then leaves, driving to his friend Jay's house. Jay was going to be borrowing Adnan's car for the day. Jay was not part of our group. He just had a different personality than um, somebody that I would surround myself with. Jay was older and dating Adnan's other good friend, Stephanie. He was a weed dealer. He worked at a porn shop. I think Adnan was being extra friendly to Jay, so Jay wouldn't think that Adnan is trying to get with his girl or there's nothing going on between Stephanie and Adnan. Jay drops Adnan back at school and keeps Adnan's car and cell phone. The school had a no phone policy. After school, Adnan's- And his cell, wait a second. So the day his girl gets murdered, another guy has his cell phone and his car? That's hella convenient, man. I wouldn't even let my brother borrow my car for a day. <laughs> Definitely would love to borrow my cell phone. Well, there's nothing going on between Stephanie and Adnan. Jay drops Adnan back at school and keeps Adnan's car and cell phone. The school had a no phone policy. After school, Adnan says he goes to the library, then track practice. After practice, Jay picks Adnan up go to another friend's house. Later that night, Adnan brings dinner to his father at the mosque. Krista had a normal day too. And that night as usual, she called her friend Aisha. She just in passing said, you know, you haven't heard from or talked to, hey, have you? The only thing I said to her was, she was to give Adnan a ride after school. Uh, and Aisha said, well, I, I know that didn't happen because something came up. No one knew what came up and no one knew where Hay was. Some thought she might have been with her new boyfriend. Adnan told Saad he hadn't seen her. The police did contact him. So he was somewhat concerned, like, where did she go? What happened with her? But she was dating someone else. So he was just like, I haven't heard from her. I don't know where she is. But a few days later... But hold on, she was supposed to be giving him a ride after school. Hold on, go back here. Night, Adnan brings dinner to his father at the mosque. Krista had a normal day, too, and that night, as usual, she called her friend Aisha. She just, in passing, said, you know, you haven't heard from or talked to, hey, have you? The only thing I said to her was, she was to give Adnan a ride after school. Uh, so they were still, they were still friendly if she was supposed to give Adnan a ride after school. They're trying to act like they were, like, they had broken up and they had, like, this, they weren't speaking or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was supposed to give him a ride after school. The friends, the friends got his car and his cell phone. So, hey, man, I didn't have my car. I didn't have my cell phone. Somebody else had it. So wherever you, whatever signal you picked up or wherever you saw the car, I wasn't in it. I didn't have both. knew what came up and no one knew where Hay was. Some thought she might have been with her new boyfriend. Adnan told Saad he hadn't seen her. The police did contact him. So he was somewhat concerned, like, where did she go? What happened with her? But she was dating someone else. So he was just like, I haven't heard from her. I don't know where she is. But a few days later, Krista would become extremely worried when Hay failed to show up for her birthday party. She had talked about you know, she wasn't going to miss it. And for her not to show up, there was just a sinking feeling. 
The days tick by, the search for hay intensified. Then almost a month later, everyone's worst nightmare. A guy walking in Leakin Park, almost eight miles from Woodlawn High, stumbles upon a partially buried body in a shallow grave. Tragically, it was Hay Min Lee. She had been strangled to death. When Krista learned her best friend had been murdered, she was hysterical. Soon after, she called Adnan to tell him the terrible news. And I said, uh, they, they found his body. And there was literally silence on the other end of the phone. Like, he, he couldn't even catch his breath. The friends gathered to console each other. I just remember um, there was a, a lot of crying, a lot of, you know, Adnan saying, this can't be her, we need to call somebody. This can't be the right person, this cannot be real. Not wanting to believe Hay was dead, Adnan called the Baltimore police. He called the detective from Baltimore County that had been working the missing persons case to get some more information. And when he called, he started crying. I kind of took the phone from him. The lady on the other end of the phone said, well, you're gonna have to call back and talk to Homicide tomorrow morning. And that same night, there was one burning question Krista didn't ask, but Saad did. I was like, do you have anything to do with this? You know, if you do get a lawyer, you know, shoot, you are, you know, it, your game is over. The body was found. This is insane, you know. And he totally was like, no, dude, you're crazy. Chill out. Coming up, cops did anything but chill out after one friend turns on another. My friend Laura was paging me, 911, 911. They had the wrong guy. So who wrote, I'm going to kill? <laughs> what do y'all think? What's y'all? What's you know, y'all? Um, atheism is unstoppable. Just released a video on this today, uh, talking about how crazy this uh, him getting freed is or getting released is, and uh, one of the piece of evidence that they try to say Baltimore City State's him. Attorney's Office is Hold reviewing on, a decision. Go ahead, go ahead. So one of the pieces of evidence that they said exonerated him is um, in that girl's car, they found a pair of shoes that she wasn't even wearing when she was found, but they found a pair of shoes in the backseat of her car, and they found some DNA of an unidentified person. So they're using that as, oh, well, that couldn't have been Adnan doing it because there's some other DNA on, on this girl's shoe that she wasn't even wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, after 20 years, you know, you give pasty levels enough bullshit, they will find some way to... Um... Yeah, and um, one of the people that's leading this of the Innocence Project is, um, her name is Becky Feldman, and uh, Fisherman <laughs> will be probably... Go, go figure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's what atheism, atheism is unstoppable said that too, like, Always the juice crew. Yeah, it, it just it just seems like cut and dry to me. It doesn't I, I I would have to let me let me let me do a poll, man. Um pause. To, yeah, pause. I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to um I'm gonna have to um do a do a do a, a real big poll, man. Um, so you're you're saying Adnan gets the tire treatment? He, something like that, man. Um, if well, not, he's practicing. Uh, he should get the stoning treatment. He probably get the stoning, not the tire. Yeah, he he he's a. I I think he killed that girl. And I think it's relatively clear, but of course, there's always a fucking like possibility that somebody else did it. But um, let me let me let me do this poll. Yeah, go ahead. Well, they're trying to, um, they're acting, the, the Innocence Project was trying to put the blame on uh, the person that discovered the body. They said they, he probably could have done it. Mm. I think it's uh, a son man discovered her too. Oh, shit. Mm. Damn. Damn. 
sun man is you throw a sun man in the mix. How we get in this? Damn. That threw us up in this shit, man. Um everyone hop on that poll, man, that I just um put in the um comment section, man. Everybody go ahead and hop on that poll. Pause. Um, let's see what's going on here, man. Um That's the most diverse friend group I've ever heard, though. Yeah, man. We got Aisha, Becky, Han, Han, Han Solo, Muhammad. Yeah, all we needed was a James Jamarquavius, man, and a fucking goddamn. I saw, I saw a sister in there, too, on the photo. Yeah, that's Aisha, man. A convicted killer many people believe was wrongly convicted. Adnan Syed in prison for the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Today, two of Adnan's best friends pick apart the investigation that put him behind bars. 18-year-old Woodlawn High School student Hay Min Lee had been murdered, found strangled and buried in a shallow grave in Baltimore's Leakin Park. I was scared. I had no idea why things like this would happen to somebody that I cared about so much. Cops first look at the man who found Hayes' body and Hayes' current boyfriend, but both were eventually cleared. Soon, police receive an anonymous call, suggesting they take a closer look at Hayes' ex-boyfriend, Adnan Syed. They subpoena Adnan's cell phone records, which eventually lead investigators to Jay Wiles. Jay is the alleged weed dealer and acquaintance of Adnan's who borrowed his car the day Hay went missing. Crime Watch Daily contributor, defense attorney Mike Cavalucci. Okay, it is possible that the sub man was in on it. I mean, but yeah, he, the sub man wouldn't have killed that girl without instruction from Adnan, though. You know what I'm saying? Why couldn't he just be in the friend group? Why has he got to be the weed guy? Because they were like, he was unsavory, man. He was an unsavory character. I'm just man. saying, like, why can't the sun man break the mold? Yeah, man. It is what it is, man. DNA, man. She describes the case changing bombshells Jay was about to drop on investigators. Jay claims that Adnan actually told him in the weeks prior to Hayes' disappearance that he was going to kill her because she had dishonored him. Embarrassed. Does that sound? That sounds reasonable. No one from, of what I know about these guys from that part of the world. That sounds absolutely, positively fucking normal. That sounds, that's the most normal thing. That's like if you tell a son man to leave, he, he, somewhere he's going to come back and shoot it up. If you fucking break up with one of these guys or like fucking cheat, not, well, you ain't going to cheat on him. Yeah, if you talk back to him at all. Yeah, if you fucking, yeah. That's, that seems very possible. Man. Damn ponytail set him off. Right, yeah, like these guys, they don't play at all with their women, man. Um, she's to leave, she's dating another guy. He's a popular guy on the football team and in the school, and you're linked to him, and then you're just gonna break up with him and start dating another guy openly. And why would this son man tell create that concoct that that he that she killed him? That something man ain't gonna do no shit like that. That something man's telling the fucking truth, man. I believe that some man one hundred percent. Some man, some man to snitch on you. I believe that. That's the something man, man. He gonna snitch. He just snitched. Some man snitched. I believe the sun man. An acquaintance of Adnan's who borrowed his car the day Hay went missing. Crime Watch Daily contributor, defense attorney Mike Cavaluzzi, describes the case-changing bombshells Jay was about to drop on investigators. Jay claims that Adnan actually told him in the weeks prior to Hayes' disappearance that he was going to kill her because she had dishonored him, embarrassed him, rejected him. Jay goes on to tell detectives that after Adnan actually killed Hay, Adnan manipulates him into helping bury the body threatening he'd tell the cops about Jay's alleged drug dealing. Adnan specifically tells Jay that he is going to give Jay his car. He's going to go to school that day, 
tell Hay that he needs a ride home. And when he gets into Hay's car, he is going to kill her. Shortly after that, in the afternoon, Jay claims that Adnan actually calls him and tells him, pick me up at the Best Buy, just as he's instructed. So that explains why the guy had his I told y'all. So I don't believe that some men would make up this shit. Some men, you, when they snitch, they just snitch. We don't come up with all these elaborate things. We just snitch. You know what I'm saying? We don't fuck. We not like Sherlock fucking Holmes and shit. We not Agatha Christie in there, man. We just tell the fucking story. We just snitch on you. Instructed, Jay goes to the Best Buy and meets up with Adnan, and they walk over to Hayes' car. Before opening Hayes' trunk, Jay says Adnan says to him, are you ready for this? The trunk then pops open, and there she is. Jay describes the body as being lifeless, twisted up like a pretzel, and Hayes' lips as being blue, indicating to him that she's dead. Jay tells cops they go back to his house to get shovels, then go to Leakin Park, where he watches Adnan dig the grave and bury Hayes' body. But friends had heard Hay tell Adnan she couldn't... Yo, that's a lot of fucking story to know. And you ain't fucking... Like, who could make that up? You know what I'm saying? Who could make that up? NYC glider man. <laughs> it's that that would be a tough one to just make it. You're this guy's right hand man. You just making this shit up. Then who killed her then? <laughs> who killed her then? Becky. <laughs> of course it wasn't Becky. We know. It was 90% of it was Aisha, man. You know, this, you've seen the stats, man. Give him a ride that day. So is Jay's account true? Within hours of Jay's interview, Adnan Syed was arrested. My friend Laura was paging me, um, 911, 911, and I called her back and she was just hysterical. They had the wrong guy. She said they, they arrested Adnan. Adnan told police the day was unremarkable. Nothing stood out saying he went to school, then lent his car to Jay, went to the library, track practice, then brought his father dinner at the mosque. But detectives would soon piece together a timeline to the contrary. Based on Adnan's cell phone records and pings, they traced him to the towers near where Hay was allegedly killed. <laughs> <sighs> but he didn't have a cell phone, remember? The other guy had a cell phone. <laughs> It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Well, it's looking good for him now. I mean, goddamn. The Best Buy, and where she was buried, Leakin Park. And with Jay. Now, hold on. His cell phone pinged everywhere. <laughs> Monkey Christ. So we, we got you here. We got you here where she died. We got you here where we found her. <laughs> but you weren't there for any of it, right? And we have your best friend snitching on you. Yeah, y'all went here, y'all went here, you drank some soda, and you washed your hands. And you lied. You told us one story, and now we're finding out it's a different story. So all of that, and you fucking lied to us. And his best friend is implicating the library, himself right? in the crime. Yeah. Practice, then brought his father dinner at the mosque. But detectives would soon piece together a timeline to the contrary. Based on Adnan's cell phone records and pings, they traced him to the towers near where Hay was allegedly killed, the Best Buy, and where she was buried, Leakin Park. And with Jay's corroboration also establishing a time of death between 2.15 and 2.36. He, you know, immediately said, I didn't do this. This, this isn't me. It's going to be okay. He was trying to reassure me that justice would prevail. When he got arrested, kids at Woodlawn were told not to contact him. He was told not to contact anyone because things that he could write or say could be used against him. But there was one person from school who would reach out, Asia McLean. 
The day after Adnan was arrested, she writes a letter to him in jail, saying she saw and talked to him at the library around 2.30, during the window cops believe Adnan was killing Hay. And Adnan actually has an alibi witness. She saw Adnan at the library, and they spoke for about 15, 20 minutes. But did Adnan say he was at the library? Yeah, and he this did. Is sister, okay, and this is a sister. If this is Asia is a sister. Um, for some reason, sisters always name themselves the kid Asia. But, but um, yeah, because the, you're all the original China man. That's true, man. Yeah, Asia, man. That's a, Asia. Ah, uh, she going to bat for sisters. One thing about this though, sisters never go to bat for criminals though. So there's something fishy about this. You wouldn't see a sister taking up for a criminal. So I think that um, you got to um, take her word for it on this one. Sure about that? Oh, for about Huh? I said, you sure about that? Yeah, no, sister, never take up for criminals, man. Come what, on, man. What, 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 what the fuck is a mammy then? Huh? What is a mammy? What you said about my mother? <laughs> 15 20 minutes the following day asia writes a second letter but christina gutierrez adnan's attorney never reaches out to her then or ever as the investigation continued jay wilds talks to cops three more times reportedly each time changing his story law enforcement they like jay's story they develop jay's story they use jay's story Allegedly, Jay, during those meetings with detectives, changes his story to match the cell phone pings he was shown. Pings which would show where Adnan's phone was that day. Eventually, Jay accepts a deal from the DA and pleads guilty to accessory after the fact of Hayes' murder. He would become the star witness for the prosecution. Jay falsely confessed as an accessory to murder so he could make a deal so he couldn't serve any time. So I personally think that, you know, the prosecution, the detectives put him in a position where it was either him or Adnan. During a search of Adnan's house, cops find a breakup note he had written him a couple of months before her murder. A note he had taken to school and was passing back and forth with a friend. What was interesting to cops, what they say Adnan wrote on the back. I'm going to kill. They were in some... <laughs> That's not good. I'm no detective, but that don't seem good. Uh, Jay did that. He set him up, man. <laughs> yeah. Or, or Becky. Or Becky, yeah. He, uh, to his credit, in his defense, he didn't put a U on the end. So I'm going to kill. He didn't say I'm going to kill you. So well, I'm going to kill Hey. So, I mean, there is an element of doubt there. Reasonable doubt. Interesting to cops what they say Adnan wrote on the back. I'm going to kill. They were in some sex education class. This was in reference to abortions, which is a bad joke, but you know, they're teenagers, dumbass teenagers. What do you do? They got back together after that. So it's not like this was their final breakup. They reconciled even after that was written. Ten months later, the case goes to trial. The prosecution was led by Kevin Urich. Just a few days in, something bizarre happens. The judge accuses Adnan's lawyer of being a liar and then realizes the jury has heard him. And although an exact account of what was said between the judge and defense counsel is unclear, a mistrial is declared. Less than a month later, the second trial begins. There are three key areas where the prosecution focuses its evidence. Number one, the relationship between Adnan and Hay, the fact that it was forbidden by both of their families, and the fact that it ended very suddenly and very embarrassingly for Adnan. Secondly, they focus on cell phone records and see where cell phones are pinging in order to determine where Adnan is at certain parts of the day. And lastly, they depend on the testimony of Jay. And at trial, a very specific timeline would be introduced. The prosecution believed Hay had been murdered within a 21 minute window between 2.15 when school let out and 2.36 when Adnan called Jay. Reportedly in those 21 minutes, they believed Adnan and Hay left Woodlawn. He strangled her in the Best Buy parking lot, 
put her in the trunk, then with Jay went to Leakin Park to bury her, a theory corroborated by Adnan's cell phone records and cell tower pings. More fascinating than the evidence that is presented at trial is actually the evidence that's missing from the trial, and that is physical evidence. There is no physical evidence connecting Adnan to Hayes' disappearance and murder. And that is extraordinary. No fingerprints, no hair fibers, no blood, no weapon, no anything. They do not conduct DNA testing on substances that are found under Hayes' fingernails. Reportedly, there were items like a rope, a bottle, and some feathers found near her body. None of those items were tested against anyone else other than a nun, and they did not match him. They had um, tunnel vision on a nun. Krista, good friends with both Hay and Adnan, was called to testify for the prosecution. She says her story was cherry-picked. Only the parts which served the prosecution were used. I can only take what my experience was with the detectives when I spoke with them, and to me, they were you know, very focused on trying to fill in the blanks of a story. And if what I said didn't quite fit in, somehow that might get left left off of the, the story. You know, just dealing with in, in the trial, they were so focused on, oh, well, Adnan asked Hay for a ride, and so he had to have killed her. And, well, the second part of that, had somebody asked on the stand, would they would have known that he didn't end up getting a ride with her because something came up. But it's how the prosecution was able to frame the questions and that this is, you know, the defense had no idea what the rest of the story was because it, those that wasn't included in the police notes. The trial lasts six weeks. And within a few hours, the jury finds Adnan Syed guilty of all charges, including kidnapping and first degree murder. The 19 year old is sentenced to life plus 30 years. I think it's clear in reviewing this trial that Adnan's lawyer failed in many, many ways and absolutely created a perfect, ineffective assistance of counsel argument on appeal. It starts with that alibi witness, Asia McLean. In her own handwriting, in her notes, at the time that she was investigating this case, she has Asia's name written down that she saw Adnan, but she never follows up. Coming up, the defense doesn't follow up, but we do. The untapped alibi, Asia McLean. I wish I could be that one person that could say he's innocent. All right, I've seen enough, man. You got a sister in there. You should have got a juice crew lawyer. Yeah, he was hey, he was proximal, man. This guy was too proximal, man. Um, even if he even if he um hadn't done that, he would have still been a they, if they going to jail for I saved his life. <laughs> yeah, it was too proximal, man. Um on tonight's breaking bond, a 20-year-old accused of aggravated robbery violates his bond conditions more than a thousand times and gets rewarded for it. Fox Smash and um what? There's there's so many videos of this of this news reporter dancing like on TikTok or, or Facebook Reels or something. She's always on there. I bet. On tonight's breaking bond, a 20-year-old accused of aggravated robbery violates his bond conditions more than a thousand times and gets rewarded for it. Fox 26's Randy Wallace joining us live in the studio to explain what happened as part of his exclusive ongoing series. Randy, another crazy one. Yeah, Caroline. Now, according to court documents, Edwin Maldonado spent many months thumbing his nose at what he was ordered by the court to do. His punishment for that is more like a prize. You got someone who was rewarded for being a failure. And this guy was a failure over 1,000 some odd times. First, 20-year-old Edwin Maldonado gets a felony charge for drug possession. A few weeks later, he's charged with aggravated robbery with a 